My name is Linda Davis with BizNet Software Support. This video will walk you through installing and configuring Microsoft SQL Server 2005 Express Edition, which is a required element to use Biz Accelerator for MASS 9200. All of the information in this video is documented in the Biz Accelerator installation guide on our website. This video assumes that all the prerequisites for SQL Server 2005 have already been installed and that the installation executable for SQL Server has been downloaded. Please refer to the installation guide for information on the prerequisites and where to download from. Let's begin. Locate the executable that was downloaded for SQL Server 2005 and double click to begin the installation. Click on Run. When the file extraction is complete, please read the End User License Agreement, make sure you agree with the terms, and click the I Accept the Licensing Terms and Conditions checkbox, then click Next. The first thing that the SQL Server 2005 installation will want to install will be the SQL Native Client and some setup files. Go ahead and click on Install. When the installation completes, the Next button will become enabled. Click Next to continue. The SQL Server installation will scan your computer's configuration and then the welcome screen will come up. Click Next to continue. Click Next to continue. On the Registration Information dialog, fill in the name that you would like to use for this installation. Uncheck the Hide Advanced Configuration options as we will need to make a few advanced configurations. Then click Next. On the Feature Selection dialog, it's extremely important that you go to the com Client Components and install the entire feature. Click Next to continue. On the instance name, you can either accept the default instance name that the installation comes up with, which is SQL Express. You can also choose default instance where it won't actually have an instance name. Or you can customize this named instance to whatever name you might prefer. In any event, once you're finished, go ahead and click Next to continue. On this Service Account dialog, make sure that the Use the built-in system account is selected and Network Service is the option that has been chosen. Make sure at the bottom here that the SQL Server and SQL Browser services are both checked. Click Next to continue. On the Collation Settings dialog, accept the defaults and click Next to continue. On the Configurations option dialog, uncheck the Enable User Instances and be sure to check the checkbox to add the current user to the SQL Server Administrator role. This is key because this ensures that the account that you're logged in with will be an administrator for the SQL Server installation. Once you're finished, click Next to continue. The error and usage report settings are totally optional. I typically leave them unchecked, but if you would like to provide information to Microsoft on your usage of the product, feel free to check these checkboxes. When you're complete, go ahead and click Next. At this Ready to Install dialog, it just summarizes what you're installing. Click Install to continue. When the installation is complete, you should see green check marks beside each product and the Next button will become enabled. Click Next to continue. Click Finish. And now we've completed the SQL Server Express Edition installation. The next step is we need to configure this installation so that remote clients will be able to connect to it. To do that, click on Start, go to All Programs, find Microsoft SQL Server 2005 in your program list, choose Configuration Tools, and then choose the SQL Server Surface Area Configuration Tool. Select the Surface Area Configuration for Services and Connections. 
On the left pane under SQL Express Database Engine, click on Remote Connections and change the selection here to Local and Remote Connections and make sure the Using TCP IP Only radio button is selected. Click Apply. You get a warning message that the changes you've made will not take effect until you restart the database engine service. Click OK. And then in the left pane, choose Service under Database Engine. Click on Stop. Now we're ready to restart the service, so click Start. And our service is now running and users should be able to connect remotely. Click OK to close out of the Surface Area Configuration for Services and Connections window. Go ahead and close this dialog.